Hi guys, Uzzer here. Welcome to another Grasshopper tutorial. Today I'm super excited because I get to do a project from my hometown of Dubai. We're doing the Burj Khalifa. Now, of course, this is a YouTube tutorial, so we're not really gonna go that much in depth. And honestly, when analyzing this project, it's actually a lot more complicated than I thought. So this may be a slightly longer tutorial and you're gonna learn a lot, a lot of interesting things on how to like set up geometries to be able to create the primary form of this skyscraper. So make sure you click the download link at the bottom of the description below to follow along with me. And if it's your first time here and you wanna learn computational design tools, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And if you want the most effective way to get started with Grasshopper, check out my free intro course at onehourgrasshopper.com where I teach you step-by-step step the right way to learn Grasshopper and how you can avoid common mistakes that most users make. Again, that's onehourgrasshopper.com. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we have the Rhino file that you can download. And in here, I've placed an image from someone else here, Wendy Shijia here, who has nicely compiled this together for us to kind of see what the programs are and just the overall form and this plan, which is what we're gonna be using over here. And, you know, as I was doing this, I realized this is a lot more complicated than I had originally thought. And so I started to brainstorm, okay, how would I create these forms? And under this layer curve overlay that you see over here, I actually came up with a strategy where I said, okay, if we create these circles and they're all the same diameter circles, but some are closer to the center, so to speak, right? And some are further away. And you can see that um, if I did those and then created these arcs, I kind of am very close to the form that I'm trying to achieve over here. Okay, so that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to focus on one wing, so to speak. And then once we get one down, we'll just uh, array it. And then uh, from there, we should be able to make the overall structure. So uh, let's see how this works out in Grasshopper. So I'm going to hide that layer. Okay, this image is on this layer here. So later we will be hiding that, but for now just keep it open. And let's go into Grasshopper. And I have started you off with this. So everyone should be able to see this. And what this is, if I zoom in over here, and just temporarily because it's a blue background and it's kind of hard to see the contrast between this red and the blue, if you come up here to the colors, I'm actually gonna change my normal color to something a little bit more uh, vibrant like this magenta or pink kind of hue. Uh, which should allow us to see it a little bit better. Okay, so what I've done here is I have a start point for the wing, which is here. And the reason I'm doing only this part is because this little like rose area in the middle is a completely different logic than the wings, as is these little parts here. So obviously we're not gonna do the entire structure. We're really only focusing on this area. And so I have a start point for the wing. I have like a length of how long I want that wing to be. And I've kind of ended it about here. And I'm choosing how many segments. So I have around one, two, three, four segments. It doesn't match perfectly. That's okay. We're just going to start developing the overall strategy and then we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, so once I have these points, what I want to do is draw those circles that I was talking about. So I need a circle command. Okay. And I'm not going to draw the circle on these points because if I do that, uh, and of course we can't even see the circle. So let's make the circle a little bit larger. I'm just going to plug in some number over here just to see the circle. And you can see that, you know, I don't want them here. I want them on the sides. So first I need to move these points over onto the side. So before I draw the circle, if I can hide those, I need to move these points to the side. And sideways for me right now is the X direction. So move them in the X. Okay. And by how much? That's the question, right? Now, I could move them by an equal number, like say 50 or something. I could move them all by that, but then, um, you know, it's not going to give me that tapered look. So what I really need is these ones at the bottom to be moved further than the ones at the top of the screen, right? The ones at the top should be moved a little bit uh, less. So the way I'm going to do that is use a range. Okay, a range, if you've uh, seen me use range before, I love using range. Whenever you click range, you want to click construct domain just so you have all everything necessary. I wish this was one component where you had start and, and steps, but instead it's two. Nonetheless, construct domain and domain. And the way this works is I can set the first number for how much I want it to move over here and the second number for how much I want it to move over here. So let's just change them to something small and something big. 
and let's see how this works. Well, before we see how this works, what's gonna happen on the right hand side is actually I'm gonna get a bunch of numbers that start at 22 and end at 62. So, and uh, I have a certain number of increments in between. I really need only as many numbers as the circles I need to draw, which is the same as the number of points over here. So I have five points, so I really only need five numbers. So this uh, number steps needs to change. So notice I have a number of segments right here. So I already have a number that kind of gives me that five. Four segments gives me five points. Let me see if four steps gives me five numbers. So four steps does give me five numbers. So if I use four steps, I get five numbers ranging from 22 to 62. And if I plug that into the X instead, you'll see that now they move uh, differently, right? One smaller, one's larger. And that's okay. Um, it's supposed to be the opposite, which is fine because I can always adjust this. So I can adjust this to be here and adjust these to be here. Okay, and now once I have those adjusted, I can go ahead and start drawing my circles. So now these circles shouldn't go, come from these points. They should actually come from these moved points here. Ta-da, there we go. Those are my circles, right? They start out further and they come in closer. Here's where you can start fine tuning it. So for example, I can really uh, start lining it up with this uh, uh, actual drawing if I want to. So for example, the start point should probably move up a little bit over here, okay? And that start domain, if I'm keeping the same circle, which might get a little bit smaller. So all of these factors you can start to adjust now as needed, right? And then you can start to change, okay, how much is the first one going out? Um, you can change the overall length so that we're kind of lining uh, these ones up, you know? There's so many things you can start doing now that if you did want to match this, you could start messing around with this. So here's where uh, I've started to mess around with it and you know, it's kind of accurate now. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's good enough for us for this tutorial. Here, I would, uh, you know, if we had more time, I would label each one of these sliders, okay? And label this one to this one, at least we should label circle radius, okay? In feet, always put the units and superfluous things we can delete. All right, so that's our definition so far. I can start hiding some of this uh, geometry that I don't need and just look at only what I need right now. All right, the other thing I need to do is draw an arc, right? Remember I said, if I draw an arc over here, that would be great. You know, that kind of completes half the form and then I can always mirror it across, right? So let me at least get this arc over here. So the way I can draw an arc is just double click, type in arc, and you'll see all your different arc options. And the one I'm gonna use is this one, start point, end point, and tangent vector. Let's see how this one works. Okay, so I need a start point an endpoint, and where's the direction? The direction is the tangent at the start point. Okay, so um, to get a tangent means that when it leaves this circle, it's actually gonna leave perfectly smooth uh, along a tangent on the circle, which will make the uh, movement almost seamless, right? That's kind of what we want. So we really want the start and the direction to come from the circle. And we have the circle right here. And the way you can get both of those is using evaluate curve. Okay, evaluate curve, super useful tool where you can plug in a curve, give it a parameter, and it gives you the, a point and the tangent at that point. Now, anytime you see curve and parameter together, you want to reparameterize the curve. And now let's enter a parameter number between 0 and 1. So I'm going to enter, as always, 0 0.25. Okay, that's just my standard default I like to enter and kind of just see where that goes. And you can see that it's given me a point and as I move the slider, the point moves around the circle. So I'm gonna have that point somewhere here, okay? And I'm gonna choose that same point for everyone, right? It's not like there's gonna be a different point for someone else. So this one is the uh, tangent on, tangent param on circle, just so we kinda know what that is. And that's going to be the start point for my arc and the tangent, which is the direction of the arc. Now, the reason the arc's not working is because it still needs an endpoint. Like, okay, I know that the arc starts here and it's tangent, and we don't know whether it's tangent this way or tangent this way. We'll find that out in just a second, but I really need this point, okay? This point right here, which I don't have yet, okay? I don't have that point. What I do have, however, is remember that line we drew, right? That line we drew in the middle, 
we did divide that into these points. So actually, if I start hiding some of that, you'll see this point right here. I do have these, so I could technically just move them up and then use those as the endpoints for the arcs. Let's try that. So I'm going to use these points and move them. Another move, notice we moved them earlier, we're gonna move them again, except this time I'm moving them up, and up on my screen right now is the Y direction. So move them in the Y, and by how much? Well, again, I don't know, so we're just gonna put in a slider, like 30 or something like that, and just see if that works. Um, yeah, it's not bad actually, right? So I'm gonna move it up yeah, about there, and again, we'll, um, you know, we can label this like arc, apex distance or something like that you know just to keep it somewhat organized we can always clean up the sketch later so those will become the end points and oh actually look it's going in the right direction if it wasn't going the right direction like say something really funky was going on uh, you would have to just flip the direction of the tangent you would use a reverse uh, component here the tangent goes under reverse and that goes under direction and now you can see like it would actually start at the same point, but the tangent will go in the opposite direction and still connect back to that endpoint. Okay, so if this was happening, you would just flip the direction using this. It's not happening for me, so I don't need to use that, but just letting you know in case on your computer for whatever reason it's doing that, that's how you'd fix that. So in a way, we kind of have half of it. We don't really have all of it yet. So what I'm going to do is just uh, mirror this over actually let's mirror this over onto the other side so we have the arc and we have the circle okay so I'm gonna actually identify them separately so if I create a curve for example an empty curve and just call this circle uh, R like for the right circle okay that's the circle on the right side all of them and I'm gonna create another curve and call it CRV arc R and these are the arcs on the right side so if you've been following along so far I just want to say thank you and let you know that there's so much more out there to learn this is just the tip of the iceberg right learning over YouTube is completely different from actually using these skills in a real project let me show you how I help architects take their skills to the pro level where they are making a difference in their projects, portfolios, and careers all in just a few weeks. If you want to learn how I can help you get to the next level, click the Computation Design Studio link in the description box below and schedule a call with me today. So here I have both of these, so I can start hiding some of this uh, you know, geometry back here. I don't need to see everything, but I can take both of these and then do a mirror. Okay, so I can mirror these around a plane. Now the good thing is like, you know, I always like to start a project on the origin. It just makes everything a lot easier. So this point right here, right in the middle of the tower is actually right on the origin. So I know this plane right here, this is going in the Y direction where my mouse is. And then outside, like coming out of the monitor towards you is the Z direction. So you need the Y, Z plane. That's what you can mirror about. So around this plane, I can mirror the circle on the right side, and you'll see that it mirrors over, which gives me, you can guess it, gives me circle on the left side, okay? The exact same way, now this, you know, I could have just used this component once, but I'm just gonna copy and paste it just so I'm more explicit with my action here. And the arc also becomes arc left, okay? And now you can see that form kind of starting to take shape, right? You can sort of see it over here. The only difference is we don't really have them as a closed form yet, right? They're still quite an open kind of just a bunch of geometries. Uh, and of course, I can still start editing some of these uh, just to make it, you know, the shape that I really want it to be. Uh, and for now, I mean, it's looking kind of funky. But again, I'm not so concerned because I can always adjust these values uh, later and start to tweak my my definition but for now I'm gonna leave it like this and figure out how do I actually make these into closed geometries that I can start extruding to create my volumes okay that's really the trick and the way we're gonna do that over here is actually start to take some of this like imagine I took just the first circle here first circle here and the arcs and found a way to close them 
you know, find a way to close them up so that they are one closed shape. How do I do that? Well, the only thing missing between these two arcs and these circles to close them up is, you know, like a line or so, something down here in the back that would close them. So the way I can draw a line down here is by finding a point at the bottom of this circle and a point at the bottom of this circle. And since we have the mirror, all I have to do is find one and then I can mirror that over. So let's find a point at the bottom of this circle, for example. Here's a circle, right? We know what the circle is and we know how to use evaluate curve. So I'm gonna use evaluate curve again, okay? Except this time, instead of finding a point to create an arc, I'm gonna move that point down here. So using the same slider, I'm just gonna move that slider over and you can see that somewhere around here is near the bottom. Okay, so I can even rename this like param for circle bottom. In fact, I don't even really need this to be um, here, zero point, what is it, 0 0.76, 0 0.75 around, right? That's a nice number to look at, 0 0.75, and it's called param for circle bottom. And I know I spelled param wrong, there we go. Okay, so this way it's not a slider, because sometimes when you see sliders all the time, you're tempted to s slide them, right? You wanna like flex them a little bit. And right now, you know, that's not a number I want someone to change. So I'm just gonna leave that as a panel. Okay, so that's over here. And again, we know what to do. We can just, uh, sorry, control Z to undo that. We can use a mirror, okay? So you can take that point and when you mirror it, you get the other point, and then I can draw a line in between them. So a line between two points, between the original and the mirror. And that gives me that line. So now, if I'm able to take this line, and this circle, and this curve, and this curve, and this circle, is there a way I can create a shape from them? Okay, there is a way you can use region union Okay, region union is a way that you can enter a bunch of curves and it'll give you uh, the region that it contains. So here we have everything we need, right? We need circle R and we need other things, but notice there's no other input here. So I like to use a merge component, okay? So we can start merging, for example, you know, circle right, circle left, arc right, arc left, and this line and plug this into here and you'll see it gives you a big error. It's like, hey, you can't do that. You can't just plug these curves in. I need curves that are actually kind of like closed curves. You know, you can't just give me a bunch of open curves and expect me to do this command. Okay, there may be another command in here somewhere where you can just enter these and it'll, it'll figure it out. But right now, uh, I wanna focus on like, how do we actually achieve this? So what I would do instead if, of giving it like two closed curves, which is like these two circles, and then giving it uh, you know, three open curves, arc one, arc two, and straight line, let's actually give it only two closed curves uh, or a set of closed curves. So the way I'm gonna do this, let me delete this, is first I'm gonna join those arcs together, okay? So I'm gonna combine the arcs and join them together. So I have arc right and arc left. And if I just use a merge, it's really not gonna work. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use an entwine, okay? And what an entwine does is it kinda it combines them into a list but keeps them separate as branches, which means it does this. It keeps all the arcs that I fed it in here, zero, zero, which is arcs right, all the arcs right are over here, all the arcs left are over here. Now, if I put this in a join command, all the right arcs can join each other. They're all kind of separated from each other. What I really need to do is have a list where each right is combined with a left. So I'm going to use a flip matrix and combine those together. And what that does is you can see now each branch only has two arcs. And an easy way to see how this is organized is using my tree preview. Okay, so preview tree, if you have this component, um, it makes it really easy to see how your data is being organized. So you can see each branch gets a different color. So here are green, blue, pink, orange, red. And this way you know that these elements are in the same branch. Very useful command. So I love using this one. And now I know that I can join these curves together, which will just give me one single curve. Planar, 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 planar curve. Perfect, okay. So let's label this. These are my joint arcs, okay? So this really helps me out because now if I have those combined, okay, 
I can start combining them and lofting them with these curves, which is the ones at the bottom. Okay. So where are those curves? These, that's these lines over here. So these and these can connect to create one nice closed region, like a surface or something. And again, you can use the exact same procedure I used here, like an entwine and a flip. So I can copy and paste. Okay. So for example, all the arcs go in one branch, all the lines go in another branch, then they get flipped and it'll give you the same thing. It'll create pairs where each of those arcs that are combined gets paired up with one of the straight lines. And that you can loft to give you this, right? So this gives me, you know, a region. So I'm just going to call this like a surface and call this, uh, you know, region 01. And the circles are the other regions, right? This is another region. This is another region. And the reason I'm doing it this way, you'll see in a second, it'll kind of become clear is again, I can do an entwine and flip one last time, except this time I can give it, for example, the first circle, the second circle. So circle right circle left. Okay. So the circles are in and the last region I'm going to give it is this one here. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, how is it that you gave it curves and you gave it a surface, right? It's okay. I mean, let's still say stay curves and surfaces until they enter a command that actually needs them. And then that command will uh, interpret them. So for example, if I use that region union, right, it asks for curves. But if I give it, for example, a surface, if it's a flat planar surface, like these lofts over here, it's going to actually recognize and take the outer boundary of each of those surfaces. So I know I did that kind of fast. So let me show you exactly what's happening here. I enter the one set of circles here. I enter another set of circles and here I entered these regions. Okay. Those are all in here in each of their respective branches. So all the circles in one, the next set of circles, and then the next, next set of surfaces. If I do a flip matrix, it actually starts to flip them. So I have one left circle, one right circle, and one trim surface. They all come together and create these. Again, if you want to check this, you can just use a tree preview again, which will show you exactly what each of these look like. Okay. So that works out really well. Notice that the result is a curve, not a surface. Okay. So close planar curve, planar curve, planar curve. These are all just curves. That's why it looks like this. You could change them into a surface if you use a boundary surface component like this. And then those would actually preview a little bit differently. They would actually sort of look like this. This is also a great way to do it just so you can make sure that they are actually independent surfaces and they're not all combined into one big blob. Okay. So now the last step, which is one of the more harder steps is actually, what do I do once I have these curves, right? So I'm going to put this all in a curve component and call this the wing segments. Okay. Which of course, what do we need to do to the wing segments? If I go back and look at our image here, you'll see that all of those segments, each of those little segments that we made that look like this, just get kind of get extruded right in the Z direction. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do that, maybe I'll just make the other wings as well. Since I have one set of wing segments, okay, I can use an array. Now there's many different arrays. The array you want to use is the polar array. Okay. Because you're actually doing a rotation. Okay. So let me hide the image again. Let me zoom back in here, open up grasshopper and here that what is the geometry we want to array? It's this one. What is the plane about which it's arraying? Well, since we're on the center, I'm going to leave it there and you can already see it's doing the array and this would be an interesting project as well. Right. Uh, but that's the great thing about a parametric model. You can just change that with a parameter. Uh, so count here, for example, you see it's 10, which is why it's making 10 copies. Uh, for us in our case right now, we only need three. Okay. So that gives us this. So this can be number of wings. Okay. Wing A, B, C, for example, there we go. So now that's three. And of course you can change this as needed. Okay. And then the angle. So I'm not worried about the angle because of course it's a full 360. So we're going to leave that alone. Really. These are the only two inputs you need, the curve and the number. So now that we have this geometry, let's start extruding it. Okay. So double click type extrude. And now you can plug this geometry into this base and extrude it in which direction in the Z direction, right? Z direction over here. 
and by how much. I don't know how tall the tower is. I'm sure we can just Google that, but I'm going to enter 1,500, and you'll see that they all get extruded by the same amount. Well, that's not what we want, right? We don't want all of them going up the same amount. We want the outer ones to start first, right? They will be lower and then uh, the rest of them go higher. So again, if I look at my graphic, you'll see the outer ones go up a little bit and then the rest go higher. And actually it goes kind of in a spiral motion, right? Like this one's the lowest, then the next one's here, then the next one's here, then the next one's here, 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 here. So you can almost guess that you need a list of numbers, right? That increment and go higher. You have a start number and you have an end number, which is where this ends. Actually, it's where the, you know, these end before the rows start. So it's probably somewhere here. Um, and how would you do that? Well, you get that with a range. So remember the range component we've been using. That's what we can use over here. So how do we do that? Again, let me go back into perspective. And let me hide that graphic here. And go into a shaded mode for now. There we go. So this extrusion shouldn't be extruded by one number, but rather by a range of numbers where we can construct a domain. And let's see, what do we do? We need a, a start, we need a start number and an end number, right? So okay, let me start somewhere low and let me end somewhere high. Again, really does not matter what the number is. The most important thing is that the system works and then we can always adjust the values later. So how many do we need? How many steps do I need, right? I need as many numbers coming out of here as there are segments. So for example, if I just count, uh, you know, with you know, by hand over here, I have one, two, three, four, five. So threes are 15, so I need 15 numbers to come out over here. Now, how do I get 15 numbers to come out? Notice that if you enter a 10, 11 numbers come out. So I need to enter a 14 so that 15 numbers come out. So where am I gonna find this 14 or 15 or something similar to that? Where do I find that? Well, if you come over here to the array, remember the polar array that we did, if I hover over that, you'll see that there are 15 defined values, okay? 15 values, so I can get that 15 from here by using list length. Okay, so list length, let me actually um, move these away so it doesn't confuse us. So here, this geometry, if I look at the list length, I should get 15, and you can probably guess some of you that you won't get 15, you'll actually get three, 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 because each thing is getting arrayed three times and that's kind of what you're getting as a number. Okay, that's not what we want. We want the length of the overall list. So to do that, you just flatten the input here, okay? If you flatten the input, it treats it as one giant list and it'll give you that 15. So let's plug that in here and that'll give us actually 16 numbers, right? Zero through 15 is 16 numbers. So you actually need to change this number here by one, right? You need to subtract a one. So you wanna tell this input here, if you right click and go to expression and you do an X minus one, it's basically telling that uh, input here, like, hey, before you treat this input, okay, whatever comes in, remove one from it and then enter it as the number of steps. So notice that a 15 comes out here, but actually a 14 enters here, which allows us to get 15 back out over here. So I have 15 numbers, and those can then be the amount that I extrude. Okay, so I have 15 numbers coming in and extruding this. Let's see what this looks like. And some of you can already guess what's gonna go wrong. And that's what goes wrong. Look at that. You have all of these are really short. All of these are somewhat in the middle and all of these are really tall. Why is that happening? Okay, look at the inputs. Whenever this happens, look at the inputs and you realize there's actually multiple branches coming into this input and only one branch coming into this. So even though they're both getting 15 values, okay, they're not structured the same. So here, instead of giving it, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five branches, each with three items, you just need one big branch. So. I'm going to flatten this tree here and feed that in. And now you'll notice it has 15 and 15, giving us 15 extrusions. And it's working, but it's working the opposite, 
right? It's actually starting with a much lower extrusion going to a higher one uh, over here from inside to outside. So that's easy to fix because I can just reverse these. I can make this higher and make this lower and start to see what happens. Okay, so close enough, right? We're getting there. And I think, actually, I think that's it. I don't think we need to do any adjustments over here. I just want to check that it is moving in a spiral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide some of these points over here, okay? Because this part is important. Let's make sure that um, we are doing this correctly. So let's hide, for example, these points, these points, any other points that are there. I'm sure there are because I see them on my screen. Um, yeah, this point for sure. And then there's another point over here, which I'm not going to worry about. But basically, I'm going to take the array, and I really want to count and make sure that it is being treated correctly. So I'm going to use something, a combination of two things that I like to use, which is point on curve coupled with a point list. And of course, I spell it wrong. Point list. There we go. So what does this do? Uh, it takes a curve like this, finds a point on it, right? It's kind of fun to use. I'll go to the exterior point over here like that. And then actually, uh, I'm going to use it on the flattened version, not the original ver version. And I'll show you what that looks like. Again, the point is overlapping these uh, numbers here. So actually, I'm going to hide the points and you'll start to see the numbers. So you will see that if once you arrayed it and you flatten it, it actually the structure is quite good. I was actually afraid that the structure would be incorrect and we would have to do a bunch of list manipulation to get the structure right. But look, it's actually doing things correctly. Look, it's going to start over here and give this an extrusion height, then move over here to number one, then move here to number two, then it's going to switch to the outer ring, right, to number three four, five, then again, the outer ring, six, seven, eight. If you had the numbers going, for example, like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, something like that, then you would be in a little bit of trouble and you'd have to do some manipulation here. But it seems to work out really great, actually. I'm quite surprised. Um, and I, I think we're pretty good. So the only thing left to do is you can notice that when you do these extrusions, these are actually all open, right? So you want to cap these, cap holes, okay? And then uh, I like to always look at it as a B-Rep preview, just so it looks like, you know, something decent like that. And that's pretty much the tower, guys. Uh, let's make this a little bit shorter. I think it's getting a little out of control. It's over a mile tall right now. So let's uh, tame this base a little bit. Okay, something like that. And that looks a lot better. Let me go into a rendered view mode. Look at that one there. And of course, there's so many things you can do to this. One last thing I'm gonna just try, just try right here is a contour. Okay, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and contour this um, at about, mm, let's say 15 feet in the Z direction. Maybe it's already Z, yep. And then do a boundary surface so that these turn into floor plates and then do a B-Rep preview on that and then hide this one and then do a swatch which is black for the naked edge and yeah there we go so that is like the floor plates it would look like in this case. Now, you can see, of course, it's not perfect, but as a sketch, I mean, you know, we did this in under an hour. So uh, it's actually not too bad, you know? I think it's I think it's okay. I'm gonna delete this part uh, just because it may slow down your computer a little too much. But there we go. There's how you would set up the Burj Khalifa as a sketch, as a parametric model. And again, the great thing is about a parametric model, we can change so many things. So for example, I come here, change this to five. Now I have a Burj Khalifa with like five uh, of these wigs, right? How awesome is that? And the, the definition still works. Everything's looking great so far. You can definitely flex this model as you need to and just uh, see if all the parameters are working okay. Uh, definitely one of these you should label as building height because that's the highest point, right? 
So, and then this one is just the first base height and you can label accordingly. But this is how you do that. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and send me a comment. And of course, if you have any other requests, you have some projects that you want me to explore um, and you know make a tutorial on, let me know. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.